Hi, welcome back girls and boys. This is the week of November 2nd through 6th and this is day two. Let's review everything you're going to need today before we get started. First of all, you need your nameplate, a dry erase marker. We're setting the letter H, so make sure you have the H in a plastic sleeve and has a picture of a hat on the back. For the colored worksheet, pages 59, 60, page 59 has a girl with a kite flying it over two houses. And this worksheet we did yesterday, we were counting objects, pages 94, 95, and we were searching for the number nine. We're ready to get started. Make sure you do have your Play-Doh, that's always important. And we have two crayons we're gonna be using today, black and orange. See if you can see those colors, black and orange. All right, let's get our nameplate. Take your time as you trace your name. Like I say, it's always better to be slower and accurate means you're doing your best job and you're not making lots of mistakes than it is to be fast so let's be accurate let's do a nice job and if your name's longer you just take your time put the video on pause let me see your name do you know the letters in your name can you say the letters out loud not the letters in my name, the letters in your name. We're going to look at our name tags and see if you at least know the letters in the first name of some of our friends. Since our letter of the week is H, we're going to look at this name first. H, whose name is this? Hayden. Hayden. First letter, E. Easton. First letter, K. Kaylee. First letter, K. Carson. First letter, K again. Kenley. First letter, B. Bennett. First letter O, Owen. First letter C, Caitlin. First letter is B, Briggs. First letter T, Timmy. First letter J, Justin. First letter is T, Trey Sean. First letter, J, J, Jessa. And first letter, E, Evelyn. Very nice work. I could hear some of you out there. You knew the first letter of your name plus the first letter and some other students' names too. So give yourself a pat on the back. Or how about kiss your brain? How do you know how to do that? You go, kiss your brain. Okay, make sure your H worksheet is in a plastic sleeve and you have your Play-Doh ready to roll. If I go too fast for you, please feel free to put it on pause and you can always come back to me when you're caught up. So get some Play-Doh and roll it back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna put the first piece right here is going to go straight up and down. That's where we write our H. The second piece. Straight up and down. Now we just need to connect those two pieces. Now I have the uppercase, also known as the capital, H. Can you make that sound? That is the H sound. Like hat, house, hen, happy. 
Now we're going to make the lowercase h. Notice that we have one, two, three that are exactly alike. The capital H, they have these long straight lines and then it connects. On this lowercase h, you still have that same line. It goes up and down. Now we have to finish it. Let's get the rest of our Play-Doh. Hopefully you have enough Play-Doh for this. I'm just going to curve around to the ground. See if you can do that. Lowercase h. h. Let's look at some h words together. H house. What kind of animal is this? H horse. Put this on your head. H hat. H hippo or hippopotamus. Great picture. So make sure your Play Doh is put away. We're going to take the sheet out of the plastic sleeve and we're going to do some coloring. See this? Pull it out. And now we have H's for hat. See this? H is for hat. We're going to make a pretty cool looking hat. Let's get your black crayon. And we're going to color the hat black, and it's going to have an orange band. H is for hat. Hat. Let's say that and talk about that while we're coloring. Can you think of some other H words? We had a picture yesterday. It was of a hockey player. Do you know what a hockey player does. Some of you have maybe never seen a hockey match. They actually wear ice skates. They're on an ice rink and they have a puck and they have a stick and they hit the puck with their stick while staying upright on their skates. Now that's a hard thing to do. You'd, it would take many years of practice, I would think, to be able to do that very well. That's hockey. Yesterday we also saw a picture of a hammer. Have any of you ever used a hammer? If you like to build things, you might have a play set that has a hammer or an actual construction set that has a hammer. And I'll show you a picture of one in just a second if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Look at my hat! That is pretty neat looking. Look at that band. I have a friend who would like a hat like this. To me that looks like a cowboy hat. Look at that hat. Hat. H for hat. H for hat. Right here is an H. Can you make an H? Straight line down, straight line down, and then you go across to connect it. H. Let's see if you can write an H. Again, straight line down, straight line down, and then connect. That's a capital H. Now for the lowercase h, straight line down and then you just curve around H. Trace that again. Straight line down and curve around H. I wanted to show you these pictures. I was talking about a hockey player. See the ice skates, the hockey puck, and the stick. And we were also talking about a hammer. Here's a hammer. I imagine many of your garages or barns have at least one hammer. Okay, the next sheet I would like you to do is we're going to do some counting. What I like about this sheet is keep it in a plastic sleeve and you can use it over and over again. So you don't have to just use it today and be done. We're going to count all the stoplights and circle which number we count to. 
You have to know your numbers in order to do this worksheet well. So let's review some numbers. We're going to count from 1 to 10. Are we ready to do some counting? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's do it one more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nice work. So let's count and then circle the number that it represents. Here we have stoplights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is this number nine or this number nine? What do you think? Let's get your dry erase marker out. This is a nine. Very good. Let's go to the next one. These are little uh, mittens, bad mitten um, rackets right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is this eight or this eight? This is the eight, the one on top there. See if you got it. How about the little stick people, the stick figures? One, two, three, four, five, six. We need to know, is this six or is this six? The top one right here, this is six. How about pencils? Let's get on our pencils. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is this ten or is this ten? It's the one with the zero next to it. This is ten. And the last one we have lamps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which number is seven? This number or this number? You did it. You did it. Way to go. And on the back side, instead of coloring in, we're going to circle all the number nines. Now for the number nine, I'll give you a quick review so you know what you're looking for. This is the number nine. Let's count to nine together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very nice. Nine. Let's circle the nine on top. Now we're going to go on a hunt for nine. We're going to look for nine. Do you remember? Nine. Can you find some nines? I'm going to give you a minute to look and then circle. On the top line, we have two. One, two. Two nines that we just circled. Let's look around for more nines. Oh, I just found another one. There you go. How about down here? That's a six. That's a two. I found a nine. And how about down here? Ding, ding, ding. Got it. There's a nine. Four, nine. Another nine. Your sheet should look like this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven nines. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven nines. We circled the very top one and we counted that also. So we have nine, nines are circled all over this page. Let's see if you found seven of them. Nice work today. I'd like to review some colors with you. And when we get to black and orange, we're gonna stop. White. Have you been on your white hunt looking for things around your house and in the community that are this color? They're everywhere. Black. Like I said, we'll stop on black and orange. Green. Red. Pink. Brown. Purple. Yellow. Blue. Orange. Black and orange. That may remind you of a holiday that just came and went. Halloween. Very good. I want you to choose your crayons that are that color. We have black and we have orange. Very nice. I want you to get these colors because we're going to use this worksheet and these crayons together. So for this, I want you to turn to page 59. It has the animals under the sea. And we are going to use our orange crayon. See the orange? And we're going to do a hunt. We're going to go on a hunt for circles. Do you see any circles? I see an eyeball. That looks like a circle. So color in the eyeball. I see another eyeball on a fish. Color that in. I see some more eyeballs on the heart. The starfish, do you see the eyeballs? They're circles. I love these circles. Those are the best to color in. So color in all the circles you can find. Oh, look at the eyes on this fella. See these? Color these in orange also. Lots and lots of circles. Let's count the circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, six eyeballs, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten circles. Let's turn this sheet over and we are going to use the orange again and we're going to still search for circles. See if you can find any circles. I see a tree. That's actually a circle here. Do you see the tree? That's a circle. See any other circles? I think the bird's eye looks a bit like a circle. How about the flower? Do you find the circle on the flower? If you want to put this on pause and find them all yourself, that's fun. And then you can see if you found them all. Let's see if I found any more circles. <gasps> Look at the girl's shirt. I found some circles here. Now some of them are only partial circles, like a semicircle, a half circle. So I am not going to, to color those in. I do see some flowers over here that are circles. Oh, look at that kite. Do you see any circles on the kite? I see circles. So many circles. Some of those circles are actually cut in half, so I'm not counting those. So see if you can find the same amount as me. Oh, look at the circles here. There are circles on this kite too. So many. And because there's so many half circles, it's probably best not to have mine counted against yours because some of them are up for debate to say, hi, huh, is that a circle or not a circle? So did you find lots and lots of circles? The last thing I want you to do with the black crayon is we're gonna go on a hunt for triangles. 
Triangles are everywhere here. Look at this. We have a house with a roof is a triangle. The roof on this house, a triangle. There's even something over the door. That's a triangle. Do you see any other triangles? I see a triangle in the tree. Do you see that little tiny one? Any other triangles? Little triangles anywhere? Oh, that was fun. And that was kind of tough, wasn't it? It was a little tough. You did a great job on that. You should feel proud of yourself for working so hard. We have a book today that we're going to be reading and it's called Truck Stop. Have any of you ever been to a truck stop? Do you know what a truck stop is? Let's talk about it. Truck stops are usually right by a busy highway so that whoever's driving a truck, see truck stop, who's driving a truck can stop their vehicle and have something to eat. Sometimes even get it fixed. It depends what kind of truck stop it is. This book is about a boy and his family who own a truck stop. And you're gonna find out all kinds of fun things that happen at the truck stop. They're very helpful people because they have a restaurant and they have a garage. The name of this book is Truck Stop by Ann Rockwell. So Ann wrote all the words. So whenever you see words, Ann Rockwell wrote them. For the person who drew the pictures and colored them all in and painted the pictures is Melissa Uwe. Iwa. She is the one who drew them and made sure that they were colorful and beautiful. So that's called the illustrator. This is the front cover. It's on the front of the book. This is the back cover. And then inside, you'll see we have a title page where it has the title of the book and it has the name of the author and the illustrator. I love the pictures in this book. I think you would enjoy looking at this in person if you could. You could get it from your library or even look at it on YouTube. And I do have a link below for an activity I want you to do. So do that for your homework. Early each morning, the sun isn't up when we get busy at our truck stop. Mom, dad, and me. So we have mama, we have daddy, and then we have a little boy. That's who the point of view is for the book. That's who is telling the story. Our truck stop is right beside the main highway, heading north and south. so early in the morning. They have to wake up early so they can make breakfast. Every morning I squeeze the orange juice. Dad cuts fries, sausages, bacon, while mom starts up the coffee. Soon Uncle Marty turns on the lights in the service garage. Another good morning has come. The pictures are outstanding in this, this book. I love it when the trucks start rolling in. Their lights are bright in the dim, dark morning. I know each and every one of the regulars that come to our truck stop. Regulars are people who do the same thing over and over. So they go to the truck stop day after day. I love how they come rumbling their wheels and with their air brakes whooshing. I love how the smell of the diesel fills the air. 18 wheeler is the first to arrive. Sam, his driver, asks Uncle Marty to check all 18 tires. Good morning, he says to me. One coffee and bacon and eggs over easy, says Mom. You bet, says Sam. They know the orders by heart. Milk tank and Maisie are next. The big silver tank glows in the early pink dawn. One coffee and donuts coming up, I call, even before Maisie sits down at the counter. Diligent Dan's moving van is next. The usual, ask mom. You bet, sausage and pancakes, says Dan. With plenty of syrup, he adds. So he eats the same thing day after day, too. Where's Green Gus? 
Ask 18 Wheeler Sam. Yes, where's Green Gus? Asked Maisie and Dan. Green Gus is the old green pickup that rattles and clanks as it rolls, but always gets there. Green Gus is always carting something here or there. But where is Green Gus this morning? No one has seen Green Gus today. Where do you think Green Gus is? Flatbed pulls into the stop with lots of loud cranking and whooshing, carrying digger to wherever needs digging. Orange juice, black coffee, and a blueberry muffin are what flatbed's driver always wants. Now our stop is filled with the good smells of coffee brewing, bacon frying, egg sizzling, sunny side up, or over easy. It's filled with the good sounds of morning too. Hardworking friends talking before they hit the road again. Some heading north, some heading south. Suddenly, Big Yellow Bus is here. Big Yellow Bus has come for me, as it always does, each weekday morning at the very same time. Now it's time for our friend to go to school. I pick up my backpack and run to the bus. It's time for me to go to school. What does he see as he's driving in the bus? He's riding along. He sees his friend in the green pickup. On the old blacktop road through the woods, I suddenly seen Green Gus parked all alone on the side of the road with a very sad driver. Please call the truck stop to say, I found Green Gus. I asked the bus driver and that's what she does. Pete and Priscilla's tow truck is on the way. They'll tow Green Gus to our truck stop where Uncle Marty will see what's wrong and fix Green Gus. And the driver will have bacon and eggs sunny side up. Then all the trucks can go on their way again, including Green Gus. Tomorrow, I'll say good morning again when they come to our truck stop by the side of the highway where the big road heads north and south. And look, we have mom, dad, and the little boy going home. Why do you think they're going home? It's the end of a very long day, isn't it? On that story, I really liked how they had names for all the vehicles, the trucks, and then they just called the person driving the truck the driver. I thought that was interesting how they did that. And they knew exactly what each driver liked to eat because they were called regulars at the restaurant. I hope you enjoyed that book. And there is a little bit of homework that I'd like you to do um, underneath so make sure that you go to that. One thing we like to do every day when we're at school is we practice washing our hands while we count to 20 and I would like you to do that with me before we finish up, okay? Let's put some soap on our hands and start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Rinse off your hands, dry them off. Nice work. I'll see you again soon. Have a great weekend, boys and girls.